So, welcome back. In this module, we will look at view sets and documentation. Let us start with uh, view sets first. So, what is a view set? A view set is a set of views, that is obvious. Now, what is a view? A view is what a system looks like for a stakeholder from a particular perspective. A stakeholder's perspective is a view. It addresses some concerns of the stakeholder. Maybe in the form of a diagram, these concerns are expressed as a diagram or a, a model, a computational model, an equation or something, or sometimes just textual description. So, that is what a view is. So, a view set is a set of views. We have used the words stakeholders and concerns. So, let us enumerate some stakeholders. So, for example, a client is a stakeholder. Client is the person who is going to use the software. I have the developer as a stakeholder here. The user and stake client probably are sometimes the clients themselves are users, sometimes the users get their software developed by some agency and that agency will become the client for the developer or the company which is developing it. So, you may buy the software from somebody, the vendor is a stakeholder or the designer or the architect is a stakeholder. So, these are all typical stakeholders for any software or software development project. So, what kind of concerns do they have? The concerns are we already have seen a large number of exabilities. These are concerns for any software system, right. There are other concerns that may encompass, they come into picture when we bring in other stakeholders. For example, the mission, what is the system being built for? Now, that is a concern for a stakeholder. The feasibility of building the system is also a concern. So, we have a set of concerns like this and we have these stakeholders and each stakeholder will be looking at a particular concern. He looks at the concerns and he sees what he finds. He takes care of a concern and he addresses these concerns for the system that is being built and he enumerates them and what you get is a view and a set of such views is a view set. Do we already, do we know of any view sets? Yes, we already know some view sets. Do you recall any view set that you have encountered before? Right. This is a set of views. This is a view set which we have seen long back, right in the beginning of our course, the four plus one view of architecture. Here we are talking about five views, a set of five views, right. This is the reference of that. Now, what are these five views? One is the logical view, the process view, the physical view and the development view. These together with scenarios. So, these five views constitute the 4 plus 1 view set of talking about architecture. So, this is a small description of what this uh, each view is which we have seen in the 4 plus 1 view lecture. So, I will not talk of it again. So, let us look at this table. It looks interesting. If I am looking at the logical view, it consists of classes which are the components. By components, I mean the entities that constitute the logical view. The associations are the connectors. The stakeholder is the end user because he can see the functionality and the concerns are functionality. If I am looking at the process view, the components are tasks, then the we have connectors between tasks are messaging, broadcasts, procedure calls and so on and they are contained in what we call processes and I am going to investigate issues like performance, availabilities, fault tolerance and, and such stuff. Okay. So, you can see each one of these views is addressing some concerns. It has certain stakeholders and it is described in some, in, in some particular fashion. Okay. This is a simple enumeration of the views and the concerns and the stakeholders. So, 4 plus 1 view set is, is a well known view set for us. How do I describe these views? Sometimes I have given what the points are, but if you want to talk in terms of UML, the logical view is often expressed in class and object diagrams. If you look at uh, the process view, you may want to use to describe the process view, you may want to use the deployment diagram, the component diagram, the activity diagram, the collaboration diagram, the sequence diagram and the state chart. So, each one of these views will require one or several diagrams to 
express all the concerns that are supposed to be addressed in that particular view. I have a, an elaboration of these uh, diagrams for a particular case study called the well known ATM. ATM is a favorite example for the software engineering community, most books deal with ATM. So, this is the use case view, I will not spend too much time explaining this, because this is just an example and elaboration of uh, a particular case in terms of this use. You can look at them in uh, leisure. This is the logical view of the ATM, this is the communication that is happening between various entities that are there and this constitutes the process view. This is again another process view, this is again another process view, I have one more process view. We have the development and deployment views here. Let us look at another view set. This is actually very interesting. This is proposed by the Siemens community way back in the late 90s. It came out as a book in 2000. What these authors have done is they looked at the practices that Siemens engineering community has been following in building their systems. A large number of Siemens systems are software intensive. So, they interviewed several developers and project leaders and examined the software practices and then came up with a view set. This is called the Siemens view set point. A large amount of software development activity in Siemens happens for embedded systems. You might have a tomography engine and there is huge amount of input coming and there is lots of software which constructs the image finally. So, that is example of some kind of equipment that Siemens makes and uh, uh, they examined how would, how does Siemens build such complex pieces of software, what kind of view sets are they using to manage the complexity. So, they came up with what is called the Siemens view set, where they describe four views. One is the conceptual view, second is the module view the execution view and the code view. So, what does the conceptual view do? It is the view which is closest to the domain, domain being the area for which the application is built for, the system is built for. It describes the system in terms of design elements and the relationships amongst them. The module view moves from the domain into the hardware and software. It describes the subsystems and modules of the hardware and software from the domain. The execution view takes it further and says how these hardware and software modules are realized as execution time components. And the code view finally, talks about the source code, the binaries, the libraries that are organized in the development environment, which will generate the components needed for the execution view. So, we are moving from the domain to the actual code in this fashion. So, this is a diagram which describes these, it is a very lovely diagram. So, we have the conceptual view here, the module view, the code view. In the conceptual view, what are we trying to do? The, the central design task is to come up with conceptual component and their connectors and the configuration of the conceptual components which conceptual component is connected to, which other conceptual component, in what other, in what fashion, how are they configured. So, once I have the conceptual component, then I get the module view, where I try to get the hardware level modules, software level modules, which come from the conceptual component. Essentially, for each one of the module, I need to come up with the interface, so that I have said a connector exists in the conceptual diagram, but when I come to the module view, I need to talk about how are these connectors actually connecting these two components. It means, what is the interface, what is the API that is used, I have to freeze the API. So, then after that what I can do is, I can talk about which are the runtime entities and the possible parallel evaluation, the execution configurations that may arise out of the module view. So, the execution view is now taking the module view, which is approximately our logical view in the port plus 1 and then maps it on to the process view of the port. So, here we are interested in resource allocation. By that I mean 
what it means is we have to figure out on what hardware component which process which task is executing. So, it also encompasses the allocation view type. Okay. And of course, the code view is talking about how do I build the system, are there any scripts which generate the system and such issues. So, conceptual module code and execution these four views constitute the Siemens view set. I have some more detailed description of each one of these views, let us see them. So, what do you do in the conceptual view? You talk about how does the system fulfill the requirement, the conceptual component, the, how do you break it down? Are you going to use any commercially off the shelf component or are you going to build all of them yourself? Are there existing products either commercial available or from your previous products which you will use? How is the domain software hardware integrated? How is the functionality partitioned into product releases? Since we are talking about products here, not IT companies uh, which are doing bespoke software development. So, I mean have a sequence of releases for my software in, in version 1 I should be able to do this, in version 1.1 I will enhance the functionality. So, I am not going to wait for the full software to, de to be developed before I release the function. So, I need to sort the functionality out. So, there is a concept of a product line, a product line is basically a set of products which do approximately similar kind of function and there is substantial amount of code and functionality reused there. For example, if I am talking of a set of scopes that Tektronix manufactures, um, it constitutes a product line. The bikes manufactured by uh, TVS or Honda constitutes a product line, a product line of bikes. There. The cars manufactured by some company is a product line. There is huge amount of reuse design architecture when you have a large number of products which have which share similar functionality and components and parts. So, how are you managing product line that is again part of the. So, what the module view does is it takes the product and maps into the software platform. So, now we have moved into the domain of software into the systems. So, for example, what techniques can be used to insulate the product change in COTS software platforms and what kind of standards you are going to use, how are you going to support testing. Now, these are issues related to already in the software space. Okay. These are not issues in the domain, these are issues with the entity that is sitting inside the hardware box, right? hardware and software together. If you go to the execution view, we have started asking questions like performance, recovery, configuration these are all our accessibilities, these are all our quality attribute requirements. So, we are going to address these questions in the execution view, because the execution view will allow me to reason the performance issues of the system, the recovery issues of the system. So, I need this view to deal with those kind of issues, load balancing, concurrency issues. So, this is the execution view. Finally, the code view talks about I do I build, uh, how are the product versions managed, uh, what are the tools I need for the development environment, what is the integration and testing, how is it going to be done and so on. So, these four views code, execution, module and conceptual constitute what is called the Siemens view set. This is another view set. Are there other view sets like this? Let us look at another one. Reference model for open distance distributed processing, reference model for open distributed processing. This is a standard which came back way back in 1996, it is used by the telecom people. So, in RMODP we have entirely different set of views, enterprise information computation engineering and technology. So, what are these views and what do they talk about? Remember a view is nothing but a set of concerns that are addressed by a particular stakeholder. So, the enterprise view talks about purpose, scope and policies of the product. The information view talks about the semantics 
of information and the information processing, the data related part. Computational view talks about the actual computation that is be going to be, to be performed, the functional view. Engineering is about the infrastructure and technology is on what platforms you are going to build this. So, this is a, a description of these views. Uh, let us quickly see what is important here. The enterprise viewpoint focuses on the purpose. So, these are how these four views, these five views talk to each other. So, we have the enterprise view, which is basically looking at the requirements of the system. Now, this is broken into the data and the computation. Information is nothing but the data. So, we have a separate view talking about the data architecture, if I can use the term, which is quite popular in um, enterprise software development. And I have the computational aspects of the requirements captured here. The engineering view is how are these met, the design aspects, and finally, on what platform and implementation level issues are captured in another view. So, this is another view set. So, what is it, what is saying here? If you want to develop a system for telecom applications, you come up with this view set, which has these five aspects enlisted. Now, I guess you understand what is happening here. Essentially, we are saying there is, if you want to talk of an architecture, you can talk about multiple aspects of it. And each one of you would probably, depending on the requirement of your organization, your job, the kind of software you are developing, will would have chosen a set of views that constitutes a view set. And everybody follows that view set, everybody working on that problem, in that domain, in that industry. And these view sets can be used for talking about the architecture. So, what you should do as a homework is, whenever you are trying to build a system, you should try to see who are the stakeholders of the system, what are their concerns, and in what diagram will you capture those concerns. It need not be a diagram, it can be even a description. So, in what model will you, con will you capture the concerns of that particular stakeholder. And once you have covered through multiple views, you have a, a view set, which addresses all the concerns of all the stakeholders. So, what you should do is look at the project you are working on or some problem you are looking at and see you have a comprehensive view set to deal with that problem or not. Thank you.